Charles Sartell. Here. Jim Stewart. Yep. George Custer. Yep. George Pickett. Here. Robert Holliday. Yep. James Longstreet. Yep. Carl Rader. Yep. Philip Sheridan. Yep. John Hood. Hey, Jim. Take a look at this saddle sore. You think that's serious enough to report? I don't know, George, but I'm certainly going to report mine. <laughs> you boys can have the cavalry. Me, I'm going to apply for the infantry. I'm tired of playing housemaid to a temperamental mayor. <laughs> That's the first good news your horse has ever heard. Go on, Gertrude, kiss him for ah. <laughs> weren't so hard-headed, you wouldn't hurt your mouth. I told you before we started, you had that curb chain on too tight. It's not the first time you've cut his tongue. You ever tried putting a curb on your tongue? No. Nobody else ever tried it. <laughs> I suppose it takes one of you southerners to handle a horse. Well, at least we know how to harness them. You know how to harness Negroes down south, too, I hear. With a strap across their back. Come on. When are you going to take a punch at him? Uh-uh. Too close to graduation. Besides, if I've waited four years, I guess I can wait another week. The breaking up of the American Union, as it now exists, is the basis of my plan. And that destruction must be made upon the issue of Negro slavery and on no other. The Union must then be reorganized on the great principle of emancipation. This object is vast in its compass, terrifying in its prospects, but sublime and beautiful in its issue. A life devoted to it would be nobly spent or sacrificed. If the federal government and its constitution are opposed to my way of thinking, the fault is not mine, but theirs. And I shall continue to oppose them with every means and every weapon at my disposal. Who wrote that inflammatory rot? A wise man by the name of John Brown. What'd you get? That's my business. If you don't like it, you don't have to listen to it. You meant it for me, didn't you? Take it any way you like. Sure he meant it for you. He tried that abolition stuff, I immediately found out I came from Kansas. Never mind, Bob. Come on, Jeb. Let's turn in. There's no regulation against a cadet having his own ideas. But there is one against spreading treasonable policies. You find the truth hard to take. Hmm? Listen, Raider. I know the truth of this problem far better than you do. The South will settle it in its own time and in its own way. But not through the propaganda of renegades like this John Brown or any of his followers. You mean that renegade line to include me? Look up your oath of allegiance and answer that for yourself. I'll answer that right here and now. I've taken a lot from you southern snobs. For 50 years now, you've been watering your precious family trees with a sweat of Negro slaves, piling up wealth and snobbery until now you think you own the government and the army. And anybody who disagrees with you is a lying renegade, a rabble-rousing traitor. Will you get this from me, Stuart? and all you other Mason, Dixon, plutocrats. The time is coming when the rest of us are gonna wipe you and your kind off the face of the earth. force has been active among the regiment of cadets. The exact nature of this subversive campaign and the persons responsible for it have not been fully known to us until this moment. Stuart, by every rule of the academy, you should be discharged from the service, and your associates are no less guilty for their part in this outrageous affair. Colonel Lee, any blame in this matter is entirely upon me. It's my sole responsibility, sir. 
That's not quite true, sir. It was my fault. We're all equally responsible, sir. That's right, sir. That's right, sir. If I believed that you were guilty alone, Stuart, I should have sent for you alone. As for you, Custer, and the rest of you, you must be taught that lying to protect a friend is sometimes an extremely dangerous practice. I'm not so greatly concerned about the fight itself as I am about its cause. All seven of you men have violated the first sin of military conduct, the traffic and violent exchange of political ideas, which are not the affairs of an American soldier. You must be punished, and punished severely. I shall request of the War Department upon your graduation next week that all of you be assigned to the most dangerous branch of the United States Army. The second United States Cavalry, now stationed at Fort Leavenworth in the Kansas Territory. <clears throat> That's all, gentlemen. You're dismissed. I'll send for Cadet Raider. <laughs> How can you beat that? Fort Leavenworth, suicide station, Kansas, the Santa Fe Trail. What a piece of luck. That's it. And the cavalry. Active duty promotion. Why, what over generals while our sick fellows are still shaking? All right. Death in the country, Jeff. Nothing grows in Kansas but trouble. What are you talking about? I grew up out there, didn't I? I well, he's not. Oh. Yeah, what would like get you boys out there. Man, life, that's my stepping ground. <laughs> Pamphlets were found in your quarters, dozens of them, together with a letter written by a member of the abolitionist party instructing you to distribute them among those cadets who appear to be sympathetic to their cause. How long has this undercover activity of yours been going on? Long enough. Very clever idea of your fellow conspirators to plant an agent in our midst. Your dishonorable discharge will be drawn up at once, and you'll be given until sundown to remove yourself and your personal belongings from the limits of West Point. Good. You can tell Mr. Stewart from me that he'd be smart to stay in the Army, right in the middle of it from now on. Cadet William Q, Ohio. Cadet Martin Evans, Ohio. Cadet Armour Marlow, New Jersey. Cadet George Custer, Ohio. Cadet James Longstreet, South Carolina. Cadet Philip Sheridan, New York. Cadet J.E.B. Stewart, Virginia. Cadet John Hood, Kentucky. Cadet Robert Holliday, Kansas Territory. Cadet Jason Wood, Virginia. Cadet George Pickett, Virginia. That's my sister Kim. Thought two years in Boston would make a lady out of you. So did I. I just popped out. Cadet William Keel, Ohio. Cadet Robert Davis, New Jersey. It is now my great honor and privilege to introduce the Secretary of War of the United States of America, the Honorable Jefferson Davis. Officers and gentlemen of the class of 1854, their welcome guests and their very proud families. I will not keep you separated very long as I myself once sat in your place and endured an interminable address by a very tiresome general. <laughs> But as a secretary of war of this nation, I have a serious obligation towards each new officer of the army before he enters into active service. And that obligation is to make clear and definite his responsibility to his government. We are a new nation among the powers of the world. Just 80 years ago, we were fighting desperately for our freedom, and we're still fighting to keep it. We are not yet a wealthy nation, except in spirit. And that unity of spirit is our greatest strength. You men have but one duty, one alone, America. With your unswerving loyalty and the grace of God, our nation shall have no fears for the future. And your lives will have been spent 
in the noblest of all causes, the defense of the rights of man. Something we didn't know who you are. 
Don't you make a move. We're taking you and them off of this train while they're still in Missouri. Now, come on, get up, all of you. officers straight from the start. This is Fort Leavenworth and not West Point. You were sent here to man a frontier garrison. Three of the officers you're supposed to be replacing are buried back of the hill in the little military cemetery. The other four haven't been found yet. The regiment of mounted rifles has only one job, to keep the peace in Kansas. And we're here alone. There's no other fort between us and Santa Fe. And we're proud of that responsibility. We've got a tough reputation in the army, but they respect us in the West. See that it stays that way. 
Order of the day. Lieutenants Longstreet and Holiday take B Troop and put them through close order drill. Lieutenants Stewart and Custer will take eight men as an escort for the freight caravan leaving at noon for New Mexico. Draw the usual supplies and report to me for final orders. Say, will you keep all those cases of Bibles near the tailboard? They're only going a short haul. We sure will. <laughs> Let's go. Ready if you are. Good. I hope you have a nice quiet trip. On any other kind, I'll lose money. Oh, we'll try and save you that. We'll see you in six weeks, sir. With luck. Just keep your eyes open, boys, and move fast. You'll like the scenery, but don't trust it. Fine. Right. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Stuart. Goodbye, Carter.
instruct all volunteers not to enter Kansas unequipped, nor to display their weapons to public view. Let that be understood beforehand. Warn them also. Not so fast, Father. Warn them also that our plans must be known to ourselves alone. That they join me in the clear knowledge that all traitors of the cause must die, wherever caught and proven to be guilty. Tell them that we stand by one another while a drop of blood remains, that under no threats or pressure do we make confessions. All right, that's our camp. I might as well tell you when you get this far, you don't turn back. You don't have to worry about us. We ain't the kind of quick. That's fine to see you keep it that way. Save all of us a lot of unpleasantness. You've been delayed. Was there trouble, Raider? No, sir. We had to detail when we got to the border. I picked these new men up in Palmyra. Volunteer, sir. That are credentials. From Illinois. You've come a long way. And we'll go the rest of it. We came here to fight slavers. The sooner the better. With it, That's right. good. Right. We'll put you to work at once. Kitsman, look after these gentlemen. Hi. This way, boys. Hey, go 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 We've received the news we've been waiting for. We break camp, Raider. Yes, sir. Let's start tearing down these tents now. you were told to bring? A couple of pro-slavers tried to grab us on the train. I shot one of them and jumped off. You left four helpless people alone to save yourself. I had to do it, Father. It was me or them. You cowardly fool. In the future, obey my instructions. We leave at once. Once you sent the ravens to save Elijah, so now you have delivered into my hands the precious means of continuing thy holy work. The Lord our God is a great God, a mighty and a terrible who regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. The Lord is a man of war. Thy right hand shall become glorious through power. Thy right hand, O God, shall dash in pieces the enemy. John Brown that talks so much about. Oh, as far as I know, he's just a dirty old windbag. In fact, he's just your type. Either of you ever meet him? No, but two of them fellas he killed at Osawana me were friends of mine. You mean Jim Doyle and Alan Wilkinson? Yeah, and that's the reason I'd sure like to meet up with this year, Mr. John Brown. He's got no quarrel with people like you, Tex. You do much better to leave him alone. Well, you can count me in anyhow. Even if he ain't harmed no friends of mine, I sure hate to miss a good fight. That's right, sir. My name is Smith, Jonathan Smith of Newton. Well, what can we do for you? 
I believe you are carrying some freight consigned to me. Oh, it might be. Have you got something to show for it? I have this receipt from the shipper. Come a long way with an empty wagon, haven't you, Mr. Smith? Newton's about 100 miles from here. My home is in Newton, sir, but my place of business is much closer to the trail. Oh, I see. I thought your horses looked pretty fresh. Eight cases of Bibles. That's right. Come on, when do we unpack these Bibles for the parson? Jason, bring up your wagon. Down. I gotta get them bottles up right to the port. That's a funny thing. I've seen that fellow somewhere. The way it seems to me. It isn't the kind of a face you'd forget in a hurry. No. Wait a minute. I know. In some magazine. The Atlantic, I think. Well, then he's either from Boston or he's a missionary. Now for something else. across the river lately, Mr. Smith. That murdering's got John Brown's on the loose again. Better keep your eye peeled for him. Thank you. We shall. This stuff sure is heavy for Bibles. How would you know? You ain't never even saw one. in the cavalry, too, huh? I see you've got the commission you were after. You know these men, Raider? Yes, sir, very well. This one, Stuart, comes from a rich slave-owning family in Virginia. He called you a lying renegade once, and I jumped him for it. John Brown, him? John Brown? John Brown? I have nothing personal against you men, but I will deal harshly with any interference. I might have known you'd wind up with this outfit. Well, that's one of the troubles with the Army, Stuart. They don't teach you to think ahead. They do one smart thing. They teach you never to turn your back on an enemy without first making sure he's hard. Stop it. We'll not saddle ourselves with a killing just to satisfy your personal quarrel. One more murder won't mark you any deeper than you are now, Mr. Brown. I intend to be a marked man. Back to your horse, Raider. Back to your horses, all of you. I've given you fair warning. You can keep your heads or lose them as you wish. Move on. So what was in those cases, George? What? Contraband, rifles and ammunition. Gosh! Then we've been delivering Bibles with triggers on them. Let's take a chance. Everybody, take cover and open fire! Dismount! Take cover!
help us. I didn't do anything. All right, son. Nobody's going to hurt you. Who are you? Jason Brown. Brown? You one of John Brown's sons? Yes. Yes, but I never did anything. He made me go along. I never killed anyone. I swear it. I'm getting out. I'm quitting. You've got to take me with you. All right. Bring the horse up, George. Bring up the horses. Let me carry him back. Boy's badly hurt. It's his father's madness really striking home now. Sheriff, there's a purpose behind that madness, one that can't easily be dismissed. George, you've seen the needle on a compass, haven't you? It's got a whole car to swing around in, but it always wobbles back to the north. What are you driving at? Just this. I've always known where your sympathies lay. It never affected our friendship, and it never will. But it isn't our job to decide who's right and who's wrong about slavery. Any more than it is John Brown's. I guess you're right, Jim. I'm sorry. That's the more doggone fun I've had since we got him up at Ellington. Yeah, well, the next time we shoot at a cow, Ellen, you let me do the shoot. Oh, my God, this drives a powder horn. Busted Lily's looking glass. When she looks at herself in that, she'll think she's a hundred years old. Or more. Of course we're aware that firearms are contraband in Kansas. Do you think we'd have accepted those boxes as freight if we'd known what they actually contain? Well, I'm just asking, that's all. Doesn't it seem strange to you that Dr. J. Boyce Russell, the most prominent religious leader in America, should be sending rifles marked as Bibles to John Brown? How can I control the marking of crates? We once received three tons of gunpowder marked birdseed. Well, then you'll have to examine every crate you haul. What? For all we know, this contraband may have been slipping through for months. Jason, listen, son. You've got nothing to be afraid of if you'll be honest with us. Now, I want you to answer my question truthfully. Did your father ever mention this shipment of rifles when he discussed his plans? Not to me. He never confided in me. Just Fred and Oliver. Fred and Oliver? My brothers. Where are their headquarters? I don't know where they went. They have a dozen places. I, I don't know. All right, kid. Don't worry about it. Anyone with the best interest of Kansas at heart can tell you that. No bandy-legged bushwhacking soldier can talk like that about the holidays. We've got as much interest in Kansas as the United States government, and a darn sight more investment. We were here before the army came, and by Godfrey, we'll be here when you're gone. If you think you can... Sir. Hello, Stuart. What did you find? Very little, sir. The boy's either too badly hurt or too frightened to talk. We leave immediately. Have them sound assembly. Yes, sir. that you called me a gold darn bandy legged bushwhack. Now go on. He says he talks with God at night. But God doesn't tell people to kill one another, does he, miss? He's a he's a good man in a lot of ways. But he's changed since Asawatomi. Those people he killed. They got down on their knees and begged them for their lives. And he struck them with a sword. Him and Raider and Kitzmiller. I was there. I saw it done. I tried to stop them, but they pushed me aside. Yes, that's how it was. We're starting at once. I'll take the first troop west to Tecumseh. Stuart, you and Custer will take the first platoon of B Troop and search thoroughly from Clinton to Dutch Henry's Crossing. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. These are your orders. Find John Brown and bring him back here. Alive, if possible. His force is well armed now and strong in numbers. We also suspect that new volunteers are drifting in from the east to join him. Be on the lookout for them as well. Retire to your respective troops. What's that? They've caught some more of us. No one's been caught chasing Not even you. You've committed no crime to be afraid of. I'm sick of being afraid. I'm sick of hiding like a hunted thing. I want to walk free like other people. You will, Jason. You're safe now. No, I'm not. 
Not as long as he keeps killing and thinking that he's right. He can't be right, can he, miss? I don't know. His reasons may be right, Jason. They may even be great and good reasons. But what your father is doing is wrong. Terribly wrong. And he'll keep on repeating that wrong as long as he lives. Then... Then I'll never be free of him until one of us is dead. I know that now. My life don't mean anything. But if he dies, maybe this whole scheme of his will die with him. I'd rather have it that way. His life. Even if he is my father, against many thousands. I'm going to tell you where to find him. Jason, I'm not trying to... I'm going to tell you anyway. In the house of Jubal Morgan, Palmyra. That's where they went. That's their headquarters. Tell the soldiers. It's better that way. His life. I got so many thousands. wanted me to tell the soldier. Where? Palmyra, at the house of a man named Shubal Morgan. Shubal Morgan, Palmyra. I wonder if that's the truth. Jeb, I'm frightened. That boy is crippled for life. And that man on the train, he died for a principle. A man killed him for a principle. One of them is wrong, but which one? Who knows the answer to that, Kip? Everybody in America is trying to decide it. Yes, by word from the East and by guns in the West. But one day the words will turn into guns. Oh, Jeb, can't it be stopped now? Can't the slaves be free before it's too late? It will be stopped when we hang John Brown. Then the South can settle our own problem without loss of pride of being forced into it by a bunch of fanatics. Oh, Jeb, what has pride got to do with human lives? Kip, the two things kind of come together down south. Can't pry them apart, not even with guns. I hope that's going to be the same way. Uh oh, that's me all over. Clumsy Custer. Or can I get in on this too? Yeah. Sure, sure. Just like you're in on it. Don't miss much, do you? Now, I've seen you work before, son. That's where I learned. Just credit one more to my account, kid. I like to let the interest accumulate. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, George. Kid, I... Don't be long, Jim. No, no, goodbye. Kid, remember this, will you? I love you. Put that in your little bonnet and keep it there until I come back. I'll remember. Goodbye. Hello, boys. Hello, Lieutenant Jim. Sir, I want you to keep an eye on Kit for me while we're gone, will you? Heck no, we're going to hunt John Brown with you. What? Yeah, we come to join up. Who do we see? A couple of flat-footed rumpus like you in the army. Why, you'd get lost. Boys, you better go home and sleep it off. So long. <laughs> Days, but it was just a wolf cub. 
He'll probably have grown up to be a killer like his father. You promised to pay me. Train this rabble gang of yours into a solid, fast-moving unit of fighters. I taught them how to use these new rifles, how to follow orders, and take a town in army fashion. But I haven't received a red cent in three months. Now, what about it? Mr. Raider, I enlisted you on the recommendation of friends in the East who said you would work for the cause. You've done your job well. I have no complaint up to now. But our plans are ahead of any personal greed. If you feel otherwise, you are free to get out. But you must decide here and now. I want only loyal men around me. You've no argument with my loyalty. I proved that at Osawatomie and every other town we've raided. But you hired me as a military expert at a set price. And I'm only asking what's rightly due me. And I say that you will receive it in time. Only let me think in peace. My son is a prisoner in the hands of our enemies. Even now, he may have a rope around his neck. An innocent boy who never fired a gun in anger in his life. While I stand here powerless to save him. All right, I'll wait. Well, what's our next move? The Bible is said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Tomorrow at daybreak, we will destroy Delaware Crossing. down too. But here we are, Lieutenant Jeb. What do you mean trailing us halfway across Kansas? Well, we don't want you to get lost. You see, I know every wrinkle of this here country just like my own face. Well, you're sure that's just as dirty. I've got a good mind to get a couple of mules and strap you on the back and send you home. A fine looking pair of soldiers you make. Well, we needed some of them pants and a cap. And then, of course, if some soldiers just our size gets killed, why? All right, get back to the end of the column. Go on before I get that mule. We don't have to obey no orders. Since we ain't in the army. But we will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till Kid hears about this. She'll skin him alive. That's if they got any skin left. Who did this? John Brown. 
How many men did he have with him? Around a hundred, maybe more. How long since he left? Three, four hours. We lost count of time. Well, you're the man that had the run-in with one of the Browns on the train. Is this in revenge for that? Yes. We're free staters here. Brown always knew we'd get him someday, if he didn't get us first. Well, I'll leave you some men to help you bury your dead. Let's see you back to Livingworth. We don't want any help. This is our fight. We don't want you or nobody else to finish it. I'm going to take care of John Brown myself. Get on your way, soldier. We got work to do. I know how you men must feel about this. But my orders are to break up all armed forces. Yours, John Brown's, or anyone else's. I'm sorry, but if you organize under arms, I won't be able to draw a line between you. That suits us. If it's got to be. A troop of cavalry from Fort Leavenworth are headed this way. Leavenworth, fools. Shubal, we're moving camp. Round up all your men. Get the wagons ready to roll. Just food and ammunition. We're traveling light and moving fast. What about the Negroes? We can't take all of them. We're not taking any of them. I promise you has come. I am leaving Kansas now to continue God's holy work. For Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as God had said unto him. And it was so that he did it by night. And when the men of the wicked city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down. Please, Captain Brown, what did that mean? What you gonna do with us? means that you are freed, the first of many millions to whom I shall give freedom from slavery. Does, does just saying so make us free? How are we going to live, get food and shelter? There are many good people in Kansas who will give you work and protection. From now on, you must fend for yourselves, as other free men do. My work here is done. Praise God. Our Lord bless God, we're free. The captain didn't keep his word, we're free. We're free, we're free. You know, if John Brown has a hundred men, we'd better send a runner back, bring up the rest of the troop. Better do it tonight. I'm going into Palmyra, George. You alone? Don't be crazy, Jeb. That town's full of jayhawkers. They shoot you on sight. Well, I'll have to take a chance on that. I'm going to get some other clothes, take a couple of men, and go in and do some scouting. I'll try to send you back word. Good luck. Say, do you two fellas still want to join the army? Huh? I've got a job for you. There's no picnic. It's pretty dangerous, but I think you're the fellas for it. What do you say? Do you mean we're going to have a real cap and a uniform? Well, we might have to be buried in them, but it sure sounds like a deal. without arousing suspicion. The town barber. That's right. Any time a barber can't talk to a stranger, he's liable to go crazy. The town barber. Hmm? That's it. Uh, 
Howdy, boys. Howdy. Howdy. Pretty good-looking horse for this part of the world. Yeah. Kansas is all right for men and dogs, but it's pretty hard on women and horses. <laughs> Say, look at that brand. That's an army horse. Maybe he just bought him from someone. No, they don't sell him. Nobody rides that brand but a soldier. You keep your eye on him till I get back. You still got that creepy feeling about this place? I don't know where they stand of these here chiggers, but something's creeping over me. Why don't you scratch and see if it goes away? Written that is all it was. Say, I got it now. We was on the same train a couple of months ago when that fella got killed. Uh-uh. You probably got me mixed up with somebody else. No, sirree. I never forget a face. <laughs> Although I was a little drunk at the time. Probably <laughs> are. Fella you saw probably had two faces. Been in Tom Iron long? Oh, just a couple of weeks. This ain't no time for barbers. The fellas that ain't trying to hide their faces for some reason or other are too mean to spend the money. <laughs> yes, I've heard you've got some pretty tough customers here. Tough, say. I'm afraid to shave half of them. I'm afraid they'll get up and cut my throat. <laughs> Say, did you ever run across this famous, what's his name, John Brown? Sure, he came in here once. Strange looking man with a hemp mark on his throat. Hemp mark? What's that? Oh, it's an old barber superstition. A, a little red line that runs all the way around here. Anybody born with that mark is bound to be hung. That's so. Uh... Say, I haven't got one, have I? Not yet. Maybe. Well, well. Keep your hand away. Get it. This was quite an idea, Stuart. You coming in alone first to look around? Or is this one of your agents? I ain't never laid eyes on them before. I swear it. I, I don't know from Adam. What were you up to? Well, it's your move. You figure it out. My next move is plain enough. Didn't they teach us how to handle spies when we caught them red-handed? Same treatment for renegades, wasn't it? When you catch them. Well, this will make you quite a hero, Stuart. The class of 54 will turn out in a body for your funeral. They may even hang your picture in the West Point Library. That's the worst places to hang. Get him out of here, Red, or we're wasting time. Just having the last few words with an old classmate of mine. And I had them coming to me. Good luck at what you came to see. We can't afford to take chances, sir. He was sent here as a spy. It's my advice to get rid of him. Let's train him up. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Right. What did you hope to achieve by coming alone to Palmyra? The Army has orders from Washington to bring you to trial. I hope that if I came face to face with you first, a lot of unnecessary bloodshed might be avoided for your men and mine. Were you innocent enough to think that I would surrender myself to you without a fight? I hope that you might consider yourself innocent enough to do that. Half of the people in America believe in your theory. A lot of them even condone your methods. That'll guarantee you a public trial. Fool. I'm not on trial, but the nation itself. Are you too stupid and blinded by a uniform to see what I see? A dark and evil curse laying all over this land. That's right. A carnal sin against God. It can only be wiped out in blood. But why in blood? The people of Virginia have considered a resolution to abolish slavery for a long time. They sense that it's a moral wrong. And the rest of the South will follow Virginia's example. All they ask is time. Time. Time? For 30 years I've waited for the South to cleanse its soul of this crime. Since childhood, I have been possessed of the fire of correcting this wrong. I tried peaceful agitation. As God is my witness, I tried. Peaceful means failed long ago. Now I shall force a decision by bringing both sides into armed conflict. Letters, words, talk, the time has ended for that. Strength and action are wanted now. 
Not a voice crying in the wilderness, but a David, armed with the power and the glory. David had a son, hadn't he? A son? Yes, Absalom, who deserted his father and went over to the enemy. What are you trying to tell me, Stuart? An Absalom died because he fed his father. Jason is dead. So be it. My son has paid for the sins of this world with his life, as once did the Son of God. It shall not be in vain. Whether you kill me or not, the army will crush you all in the end. My advice to you is to find peace with your maker. our destruction. The hand that has never failed us has come once again to our protection. It's not with malice or revenge that we take this man's life, but in just retribution as befits all enemies of mankind, all enemies of God. Ready, sir.
a fight on, John? That's the longest stretch has been me. Right, Mammy. Don't tell me how to do this, boy. I've been wrapping white folks all my life. When they was babies, I wrapped one in. And when they growed up and took on too much corn liquor, then I wrapped t'other in. All right. Then what made you leave home? Well, old John Brown said he's going to give us freedom. But shuckins, if this year cancels his freedom, then I ain't got no use for it. No, sir. Me neither. I just want to get back home to Texas and sit till kingdom come. This man, fall out! Well, we had a nice ride. Both ways. Lost him, huh? He and a few others got away in the hills. I think I hit one, Jeb. You ought to heard him holler. Heard him holler, you jughead? That was me. You shot my hat off. Well, it won't matter much. He's broken for good. From now on, he'll find every man's hand against him. Nothing will ever break the force of John Brown's yet. Not even death. Oh, you're wrong, George. He's finished. His force is broken forever. Why hast thou afflicted thy servant, O Lord? Wherefore do I not find favor with thee? Why hast thou laid the weight of all this people upon me? Yes. This is the sign for which I have waited, O oh Lord. This is your command, the burning bush. Let there be no peace in all this land until we have revenged ourselves upon thine enemies. As once you smote the Philistines, smite now the fury of thy wrath upon these blind, misbegotten fools. And I shall be thy right hand. I, John Brown, shall be the sword of Jehovah. stretch their way right across the old trail, right over Kansas, down into the territory of New Mexico. Someday we can tell our grandchildren that we open the doors of America to the great Southwest. Won't we, kid? You just build your railroad. I'm not guaranteeing anything. <laughs> yep, the end of John Brown was our beginning. Maybe it'll cost a lot more blood and grief, but it's going to be worth it. Dad, can I ring the bell on the truth train? Yep, and blow the whistle. That'll be a day you can live for, oh, kid. Oh, <laughs> Oh. 
song. Where does it come from? It's an old army song, a farewell. These young men have all been promoted and are ordered back to Washington. That's splendid. You lucky devils, I had to wait 10 years for my captaincy. And I also followed tradition by proposing to my wife the same night. <laughs> Wouldn't you like some refreshments? Yes, I would. Good idea. Well, I think I'll run down to the stable. Horse throw a shoe this morning. Ah, see you later. I'll go with you. Maybe I can find it. What did you have to go and lie for, telling the Major we was the best barbecues along the Santa Fe Trail? Well, I just mentioned it sort of casual. How do I know he's going to take us up on it? Wait till he starts eating this. <laughs> he won't take us up, he'll take us up and out. You think it's going to be hard chewing, Tex? Well, I don't know. I still got a hunch. We should have skinned it first. We took the horns off of it, didn't we? What is the captain's pay, Jeff? Thirty-eight dollars? Uh-uh, forty. Forty a month. <laughs> Say, that's enough to get. Go on, get what? Well, you know this and that. What are you planning to do with your extra pay? Exactly the same thing as you are, son. Want to throw straws? Not this time. This means too much. Well, how are we going to handle it then? Take turns? I don't trust you southern boys in the moonlight. All right. Let's ask it together. Hey! Wait a minute. What is this, you loser? Come on, don't argue. Just come along and listen. There you are. George has got something to ask you, Kit. You have the floor, George. Well, I don't know just how to start, Kit. But there's an old Indian woman who hangs around the fort and tells people's fortunes. She's supposed to be a wonder at it, and, well... Yes, George? Well, she said I'm going to get married soon to a very beautiful girl. Did she, George? That's very nice. Pretty slick opening remark. Kit, were you ever by any chance a blonde? Why, no. Not even as a baby. Are you sure? This old woman's never been wrong before. Absolutely sure. Well, maybe she's still right. There's a whole lot of beautiful blondes in the world, George. Let's ask her. Let's. Wait a minute. Kit, are you in love with him and not with me? I guess I am, George. You're going to marry him? Oh, wait a minute. I can handle this proposal from now, son. Kit, you really mean that? You haven't asked me anything yet. I wonder if I said the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have been more perfect. Now, where's that Indian? Santa Bajorita. The morning I'm a tumble, 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 i she says that this is one of the last times we'll all of us be together as friends. <laughs> now ask her something sensible. Who's going to be the first general? When is Tom when he got it? Oh, my God, he's American, my Tom Ball. I'm going to see her, too. Oh, my God. She says that one day you'll all be famous men. Great in battle. But better enemies. What? <laughs> Picket Hood, Custis, Shirt, and Longstreet, and me, enemies? Now I know she's crazy. Where'd you ever pick up this old faker, George? I can tell better fortunes than that with tea leaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might as well get our money's worth. Ask her what we're going to fight about. Yeah, who's going to start it? Where can this one Jimmy me got one? Oh, my mother could say good to MP, MPC, I can watch you. I'm a jerk, 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 I'm a What's this? Too ridiculous to tell? She says the fight has already started. Somewhere in the east, a man is lighting a torch. Now, at this very moment, the two of us will help to kill him. But none of us can stop him. Here's where I would attack first. The arsenal of Harper's Ferry. 
Give me only a hundred good men, Dr. Russell. Well-armed and God-fearing men who believe in the cause. I will lead them through Virginia. Rouse the thousands of discontented slaves who will flock to join us. Then sweep down through the South, through the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. Then with the entire nation in a state of chaos, we can dictate our own terms. Have you considered the army, Captain Brown? Surely they'll be after you in full force within a few hours after you first attack. Let them come, Dr. Russell. Let them try to stop me. I've studied that country for years. It's full of good hiding places, natural forts, where large forces of brave men can defy pursuit indefinitely. Mr. Raider will go ahead of us and scout the town. Yes, sir. With his knowledge of military methods and our great advantage of surprise, we can outwit the army at every turn. Captain Brown, this plan of yours is mad, worse than mad. It's high treason. Such a brazen attack would lead to civil war. Exactly. That is exactly what I want. Is it your wish, then, to destroy the Union? My answer to that is yes. To the devil with the Union. We've got to fight sometime. It might as well be now. Gentlemen, I came here to Boston at great personal risk. There's a price on my head of $10,000, so my time is precious. You've given me much help and encouragement up to now. But all that we have done in Kansas and elsewhere will be wasted. Unless you see it through to the glorious end. How much money will you need? We now possess the guns, ammunition, pipes, a complete store of supplies. The place in the hour is set. Harper's Ferry, daybreak, Monday, October the 16th. We will strike with two forces, suddenly with complete surprise, and then move rapidly to Virginia. You men all know what will be demanded of you. Yes, we're waiting, Captain. Captain. It's Raider. He made good time. Well, what did you find? Well, the town itself won't be any trouble. There's a bridge at the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad to be blocked, and we've got to cut that telegraph line to Washington. What about the government arson? It's guarded by only two men. Here, I made this rough map of the place. Good. Excellent. This is precisely what I wanted. We must first take some hostages from the town. That'll prevent an attack by the civilians, and we'll move directly on the arson. Now, there's something else. What? I want to settle our account. Back in Kansas, you promised to pay me what's due when you got the money. How dare you demand a settlement of a private matter? With the nation's hour of deliverance, not three days off. Well, that's putting the cart before the horse, isn't it? I've done a job for you nobody else could do. So I was right at Palmyra. The cause itself means nothing I'm to me. I'm only holding you to your word. Are you indeed? Have you forgotten so quickly my method with disloyalty? I haven't forgotten anything. But you've got the money to pay me, and you can't afford not to. Yeah, this is your memory. I haven't waited 30 years to bargain with a rogue at the final hour. Quite as high as you think you do, Captain Stewart. 
Hello, kid. You look wonderful. Thank you. Say, George was just telling me you promised him the biggest night of his life. Where do I come in? You don't. I'm very fond of George. Thank you, kid. I haven't told you this, but we have a deep understanding. Wait a minute, kid. Are you serious? What is this? I'm going to take care of George for the rest of his life. Kid? That is, he's the man I think he is. Oh, kid, I have my fault. But I can be as faithful and loyal as any man that ever lived. Now, wait here, both of you. Tough luck, son. I guess we can't all have charm and good looks, too. Oh, sir, I hope you're joking or you're not going to have either. Oh, don't take it so hard. I mean, this is something that could happen to them all. <laughs> Charlotte, I want you to meet Captain Custer and Captain Stewart. This is Charlotte Davis. We were schoolmates together in Boston. It's a pleasure, Miss Davis. Thank you, Captain. Well, yes, indeed. A great pleasure. I've heard so much about you, Captain Custer. Me? Mm-hmm. Well, I, uh... Well, that is, uh, I mean, uh, well, uh, well, that is, uh, yeah. Shall we dance, Jim? Yes, of course. Who is she? <laughs> That's the blonde, the one that George was promised by almost sit in the mud. Oh, I see. Well, this is pretty nice. Let's think. The wheel. Company. Present arms, prepare to scoop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. About base. Company forward. March. Eyes right. Right wheel. Well, there I was, right out in the middle of Kansas, facing 500 crazy fanatics, heavily armed. And me with only 15 soldiers. Good heavens, Captain, how terrifying. What did you do? I sized up the situation at a glance, dismounted, and walked straight toward him. Not, not alone. My dear young lady, there comes a time in every soldier's life when he must stand or fall alone. And if you knew the Army, you'd understand that he who hesitates is lost. Oh, it wonderful, Captain. Oh, it was nothing, really. Be delighted. Is he in the government service? Yes, but I think he'll lose the job in the next election. Oh, that's too bad. Say, he should be in the Army. You know, politics don't bother us. He'd rather go fishing anyway. Father. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Colonel Lee. Hi, dear. Father, I'd like you to meet Captain George Custer. Oh, but of course I met the captain at West Point when he graduated, didn't I? Yes, sir. Hi, Custer. I'm fine, Colonel Lee. We've heard good things about you. Congratulations. Yes, the captain's just been telling me how he put down the trouble in Kansas by himself. Splendid job, pal, man. Oh, splendid. Wasn't there also a chap named Stewart, uh, Jeb Stewart, connected with that campaign? Stewart? Uh, yes, sir. He was around. Shall we dance? Time doing that. 
Suppose I told you that I left John Brown three hours ago with a well-armed force of men, not very many miles from where we're standing. I'd say you were out of your mind. All set to strike at Harper's Ferry on the Maryland-Virginia line sometime tonight. With reinforcements of over 1,200 men expected before daybreak from Pennsylvania. Brown plans to arouse the slaves. First in Virginia and then throughout the South in open rebellion. The telegraph wires will be cut and he'll block the railroad. And then at daybreak, they rush the arsenal. Take thousands of weapons with the idea of arming the Negroes. Well, that's the situation, gentlemen, move for move. I don't know, you may be able to get there ahead of them, but if you do, you've got to move fast, tonight. It's fantastic. Our Secret Service has reported John Brown to be out of the country. Well, I ought to know where he is. I've been with him every day and every mile since we left Kansas. Then why have you informed on him? Don't forget, Colonel, I was in the service once. I was young and I made a mistake. I didn't know that then, but I do now. I guess some of the things we learned at West Point stay on inside of us a lot deeper than we realize. Anyway, I couldn't stand by and see my country torn apart by a madman like Brown. I had to come here. This was something a lot bigger than myself. Couldn't have been the size of the reward you'll get for turning him in, could it? I said why I came here, and that's the truth. But I am entitled to any reward. I'm even willing to go back there and rejoin him tonight just in case he gets suspicious or changes his plans. Now, what more proof do you want than that? I believe in because it's too dangerous not to. How soon can you start, Colonel? We'll be ready to leave in an hour. The officers are all here. Call them at once and proceed with all speed to Harper's Ferry. Have your orders, Captain Stewart? Yes, sir. Jeff, what is it? What's happened? John Brown. Get the little Davis girl to take you home, will you, darling? Surprise. I'm sorry, I can't explain now. No time. But try to keep the others calm. Tell them there's nothing to be excited about. Goodbye. Goodbye. train is due until well after daybreak. No, sir, not until 8 o'clock. I rode within 10 miles of Washington to make sure. What kept you so long? I had to take a side road both ways. Ugh. Shubel, Townsley, get your men, block the railroad bridge. We meet below the arsenal at daybreak. Kids Miller, go to the town with 20 men and get the hostages. You know the ones? Yes, sir. Rest of you men, follow me. We could stand off the whole army here. What about the prisoners, Captain? What is the meaning of this outrage? Why have you broken into our homes and dragged us here? Who are you? I am John Brown of Kansas. John Brown? You are prisoners of the provisional government of the United States. The citizens of Harper's Ferry attempt any interference. I shall use you as I see fit. Otherwise, you will be peacefully released when we depart. We must adhere to our schedule to the precise minute. We will leave here at 10 o'clock. By nightfall, we should be 35 miles into Virginia. What about the men from Pennsylvania, sir? They're late in arriving. We cannot wait. Wouldn't that be taking a long chance? No word of us can leak out until tomorrow, maybe even two or three days, and then we'd be 1,500 men. I don't see that there's any reason to hurry. That sounds sensible. I disagree. I'm anxious to get out of here, and time is our most valuable weapon. Uh, you're in command, sir. But that's been the fatal mistake to many an expedition. My advice is to wait.
people are firing at us. Just a handful of them with old shotguns. We can clean them out in five minutes. Idiots. Why do they fight us? Can't they understand? What is your name? Brewer. If you value your life and those of your fellow townsmen, you will do as I say. Yes. Circle the town is that was not their orders. Help with the wagons. Yes, sir. But well, don't you think we ought to wait another half hour? It might be that. flag to John Brown.
John Brown of Kansas. I am. Uh, we've met before, I think. And thanks to Mr. Rader, we now meet again. This is Colonel Lee's formal demand for your surrender. Once more, sir, you overrate your strength in supposing that I can be taken against my will. That's your final answer? It is. We prefer to die here.
up, Kit. He was born for this. I'm not crying for him, Jeb. I see something else up there. Something much more terrible than just one man. Have you any last words, Don Brown? I am only walking as God foreordained I should walk. All my actions. Even the follies leading to this disaster were decreed to happen long ages before this world began. But I cannot remember a night so dark as to have hindered the coming day. Or a storm so furious as to prevent the return of warm sunshine in the country at peace. I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land can never be purged away but with blood. I let them hang me. I forgive them, and may God forgive them, for they know not what they do.